Hey guys, Greg Benz here with another Photoshop tutorial. In this video, you'll learn how to optimize the brush tool for your photography. As photographers, most of the time we're just using the paintbrush tool to paint on a layer mask so that we can blend one layer into another. And whether you're using selections or just painting freehand, there's a certain set of settings you can use in the brush tool that will give you much more beautiful and natural results. Before we get to the Photoshop part of this demo though, I do want to talk to you for a second about the right tools for the job. If you're using a mouse, you're just using your upper arm. It's a pretty crude movement for the body. If you're using a trackpad on a laptop, you're pushing down, same thing. You're, you're moving the same muscles with a stiff finger and a lot of friction. It's very hard to be controlled. I always prefer to use a Wacom tablet. Using some kind of a pen tablet is a huge advantage. As I mentioned, when you use a mouse, you're moving your whole arm. You're using your shoulder and your elbow, which are not very precise movements. When you're using a pen, you've got your wrist anchored, and then you're just moving the finesse of the knuckles in your fingers. It's much more precise. And that's why a Wacom tablet and pen are so helpful in photography. Don't worry about what size or what model or how many levels of pressure, it doesn't matter. If you're an illustrator, it's a different story, but as a photographer, you can use any tablet and it's gonna be such a huge advantage over a mouse or the trackpad. So I would highly encourage you to get one. Just get the, the cheapest one and the size you like. That's all you need. It will help your painting tremendously. So let's dive into Photoshop and let's talk about the paintbrush tool. Inside of Photoshop, first go over to the toolbar and click on the paintbrush icon or click the letter B on your keyboard, which is the shortcut for brush. And then you'll notice there are several options up top where you can set how the paintbrush will behave, including a link to some advanced options that we'll get to in just a minute. But let's first start with the very basics and we'll build up to that. I have a black canvas here with a pure white foreground, which is pretty typical of painting on a layer mask. If I had a layer mask, it would either be black or white, and then I'd paint the opposite color onto it. So this is a pretty good example of the sort of painting most photographers do most of the time. So opacity is going to be the maximum amount of the foreground color that can be laid down in a single brush stroke, and flow is how quickly you get there. So if I'm at 100% flow and opacity, any brush stroke is just gonna lay down a whole bunch of the foreground color. It could be any color. In this case, it was white, but if it was green, we just lay down green. If we bring the opacity down to say, you know, 52%, when we bring this, notice that it's much darker. It's put down 52% brightness. If we look at our HSB value in the info palette, we can see it's at 52%. So it did not lay down the full target value. It's just diminished. And here's the thing about opacity. Even if I go back over it, it does not increase the amount. That is the upper limit for a single brush stroke. If I go back over other things in the image, it can increase them, but within my current brush stroke, that's the max amount that it can lay down. I could start a new brush stroke and keep building. But every time I let go and click down again, that's a little cumbersome and it can create some weird looking artifacts on the screen. So it's not really the way that I prefer to work. Let's take a look at what we can do with flow instead. If we bring the opacity back up, and bring the flow down to something very low. I usually work between about one and 5% or so. But if we paint with the flow here, notice at a low value, we get a limited amount of paint. If we increase the flow, then a single stroke is gonna give us more paint. So flow is controlling the amount that comes out in a single stroke there. Let's clear our screen. But here, here's the really cool thing. If we bring this down to a low value, so we get a minimal amount of paint, but if I keep going back and forth over it, it will build up. So I can keep building all the way up to the limit set by the opacity. So in this case, I can go all the way up to 100% of the foreground color. So at this point, we almost got there. We're at 98% brightness. If I set the opacity a little bit lower, then I can keep painting back and forth and back and forth. But no matter what I do with a single brush stroke, I'll never get more than 45% because that's my opacity limit. See, this stops where it's going. I can paint over the other stuff and keep building that just like I could before, but opacity is the limit on how far we can get with a single stroke and flow is how quickly we get there. The way that you wanna use this is 100% opacity and a very low flow, like anywhere between one and 4% is usually really good. And that way, if we have 
our white brush we're painting, we can paint with some real subtlety. I can, you know, get this edge to be really nice and white, and you know, over here it can be really, really light and subtle. So you have much more finesse and control by working with high opacity and a very low flow. Now notice that we have this weird looking overlapping circle appearance to our paintbrush. So let's tackle that next. Let's undo this. And just for reference, we'll lay down one of these things. Let's go 100% flow so you can see what's going on here. So here's where we were with these overlapping circles, this little scalloped edge. And we'll go into the advanced options. So click on this and we get the brush palette, which is the same thing as going to window brush. Same thing, it's an entire toolkit for the paintbrush and it has just a crazy number of options. We've got each of these check boxes has numerous sliders and drop downs and check boxes and it just, it's chaos. But here's the thing, you don't need any of it. You can turn all of these things off. The only thing you care about as a photographer is right up here in the brush tip shape. In fact, the top of this is the same tools that are available right here. So if you're gonna play with the size and the shape of your brush, this is the place to do it. But the thing that you care about is spacing. So these circles we got are controlled by the spacing. If we go to uh, say 50%, what that means is it will move the distance of half or 50% of one of these circles and lay down the next circle. So as I drag here, see how there's space that every time I go half a circle, it lays down another circle. If I were to put this up to 100%, then you go the full width of a circle and put down the next one. So they're kissing right at the edges. Well, you might ask, why not drop the spacing all the way down to 1%? I mean, that certainly would give us a very smooth edge. Notice how clean that is, edge is compared to this edge up here. But here's the thing, at 1%, look how slow it is. It takes a long time to catch up. So when you're painting on your image at 1% spacing, that is gonna be a problem. And there's another issue, and that is that the spacing will interact with the flow. If I have my spacing at 10%, which is my preferred value, and I set my flow down to a reasonable value here, then let's see, let's set it even lower. Let's put it down to where I normally go. So I'm getting something like this. If I go and set my spacing all the way down to 1%, look at what it's doing there. Because it's laying down at 1%, so by the time I move the width of one circle, it's laid down 100 of these other circles versus here, it was just laying down 10 because there were 10% gaps. So at 1% spacing, I got all the way up to 99% brightness. Now if I paint really quickly, a little bit less than if I paint really slowly, but essentially at 1% spacing, the flow is almost irrelevant because I'm hitting that, that top value. So I'd be forced to dropping my opacity and I don't want to do that. So spacing at 1%, it's slow and it just, it overrides your flow or essentially it's just so much flow you can't control it. So the best setting here is going to be 10% and now you get this nice controlled look to things. It's not going to have perfect edges like above, but it's close enough. And once we soften up the brush, it'll be gone. So that's the only setting you need to care about in this advanced dialog. So let's go ahead and just close that because we're done with it. But next, let's go take a look at the hardness. So we've been painting so far at 100% hardness. So here's a hard brush. If we take that hardness down all the way to the extreme opposite, to zero to a soft brush, here's a soft brush. And notice how these edges are very, very feathered. It's, there's a Gaussian blur applied to the brush. So here we got this crisp, sharp transition from pure white to pure black. Here we got the smoothness. This is definitely much more the look that you want to see with your brush. Here's the other thing you're gonna get with that. If we go to our flow values that are gonna be much more natural where we're normally painting, here's a soft brush. You don't really see those overlapping circles. They're basically kind of gone. Actually, I think I had a little bit of an overlap. There we go. Had an old circle. Versus if we go to our hard brush, you see those circles. So just softening your brush up a bit is going to get rid of that overlapping circle look quite a bit. Now I wouldn't go all the way to 0% hardness most of the time for a couple of reasons. One, if you take your hardness all the way down, notice that we're still gonna get a little bit of a lag. It's pretty good on a small brush like this, 
But if we take our brush size up even further to really big brushes, it is gonna take a second to catch up. In fact, it's very slow at that point versus if we were to use a more moderate brush around 25 to 50%, it will catch up faster. And it's still gonna slow things down compared to a truly hard brush. And it's only gonna matter at larger brush sizes. But for me, I find that about 25% hardness or so is pretty ideal. And those are really all the settings that I use for my brush tool. I'm gonna to be at about 25% hardness or so with a circular brush selection and whatever size that I need. So that varies all, all over the place. And I will change the hardness. I mean, I go all the way to zero and 100% if I need to. I mean, 100% is great for pinpoint precision in tight areas, but generally speaking, it's gonna be around like 25% or so. I'll set my opacity up to 100% my flow very low, typically kind of one to 5% range. And then we had that little hidden option where we wanted to turn on the, uh, the spacing to 10%. The last thing I'll say is if you have a Wacom tablet like me, there's one more thing that you may want to play with. And to show it, let's take our flow back up to 100% so we can see what's going on. I'm gonna use the uh, left and right bracket keys to resize my brush, it's the shortcut there. And notice with a, a brush normally, everything kind of comes out at the same opacity value, just limited by the flow. But we can click this little icon here and notice it turned down the transfer and advanced option. So it is the kind of the same thing there. With this activated, now the pressure I apply to the pen will change the opacity. So if I push really hard, I'll get to the 100% opacity I've set here. But if I press less, then I'll get some fraction of it. So if I push kind of soft, notice I can get a little lighter. If I push harder, and really hard, I can get all the way to 100%. So having this option on gives you some really nice, subtle control. And let's just kind of bring that all together here. So back down to my, say, 5% flow. And so with a brush set like this, I now have this really smooth look and I can make it as you know white or light as I want it to be with nice soft edges. So things are gonna look very, very smooth in my mask with whatever I do. So that's how I set up my brush in Photoshop for photography to get very smooth and natural looking results. If you enjoyed this, please be sure to leave your comments and thumbs up below and subscribe at gregbensphotography.com newsletter to get the latest tips and tricks.